my electronically operated curtain has failed again in a different way from the way I've seen it fail before. All right, so maybe it's a power supply issue. Pull that out, plug it back in. It's making clicky noises, but not moving. I'm lucky in that I have a second wall adapter, which is actually different from this one. So let's try the other one, make sure it's not an adapter issue. All right, so we have the known working good power adapter. And no, nope, it's a motor unit issue. All right, so we want to take this thing off of the rod to make sure it's not a mechanical issue in the rod that's binding things up. All right, so let's see if this thing works without being on the rod. Nope. Oh, here it goes that direction. Stop. Not going in that direction. It's going one direction, but not the other. Probably a relay broken inside. At least with the motor disconnected, you can manually move these guys. So you can open and close it manually. To disassemble the case, we take out these four Phillips screws. Then when you take it apart, watch out for this little guy and its spring. So far, the motor's never broken. Problem has always been this guy here. Alright, so how this works is that the relays by default hold both of these wires down to ground or negative. And when you push the controls on the remote, um, one of the relays closes, which brings that particular wire up to plus 12 volts, and the motor turns in one way. So if you bring the other wire to plus 12 volts, it turns the other way. So, let's see here, plug it in on the bench goes that way, but doesn't go the other way. You can hear the relay clicking still. So relay is clicking, but the contacts inside are not carrying current. So all I have to do is figure out which relay
reattach this black wire that popped off when I was moving things around. All right, to repair the wire, I have to take the bit of broken wire that broke off, soldered in the hole out. So I'm going to heat that up with the soldering iron. Get it nice and warm, and then grab it with a pair of pliers and pull it out. Now that, then you just push the wire through the open hole after stripping a little bit off the end. Heat it up and solder it on, which is much easier than soldering a single relay. Then you plug it in. If the yellow light turns on, it's ready for testing. So there's one direction and the other direction. All right, good until another relay breaks. All right, when you put it back together, make sure the relays are still facing on the top like they were when I took it out. The black wire for the IR sensor has a knot inside and then it goes through a little notch in the plastic here. The white wire for power goes through a notch there. There's two screw holes through here and there and you need to make sure, especially that white wire, is not going to get caught in that screw hole when the mating side with its little screw holes match up to it. Perhaps the trickiest bit of getting the thing back together is the little latchy spring thing. I recommend placing it in its track with the spring on the bottom and um, holding it in place there while you put the top lever on top of it. So you have to push it in a bit to get it down so it goes correctly. And then you can use a screwdriver to push the back spring in to make the spring be kind of low. And if you're holding on from the outside like that, it won't go anywhere while you carefully slot this thing in. And remember the circuit board has to go through these slots in the back. You have to match all the screw holes up without any wires getting caught. And you've got to get this little latch thing into there as well. And after you get it buttoned up and all the four Phillips screws in, it's good to do a last test just to make sure you haven't smushed any wires or broken anything while you're putting the case together because it's annoying to put it back on and find out it's broken and have to open it up again. Of course, for the final test, we have success.